Happy Valentine's Day. How are you guys doing? Are you having a really good holiday? Are you having a really like, holiday? Um, on the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. And together, we're going to work together as a team to show you guys how you can create this fantastic anti-Valentine's painting, Love Hurts. I'm really excited about it. We just came from Facebook, and we're hopping over here. We gave some free tips. That video will be included in the web page below after the show. So if you look below, there's a bunch of information about materials and stuff that I'm using or probably using and a link to the web page. This particular web page link is super critical for this project because there are materials on it provided for you for the purposes of creating this work so you don't have to go out and source it all yourself because we thought that would be like good but then also probably frustrating so we went with we're sourcing it for you and then you can use it in your art project i hope everybody's really good today oh yes everyone's super excited to be here this is very fun painting everyone's ready to get started this is very different than anything we've done this is definitely a multimedia piece <clears throat> i'm still getting over um, i feel great i feel amazing i am getting over a little bit cold so my voice might be a little bit raspy i have an 11 by 14 canvas here and this particular day, I'm just doing one wish because there's just a lot of stuff going on in our community right now. And this wish goes out to anyone dealing with an extraordinary and unbelievable loss right now. We hope you are surrounded by love and friendship and, this, and the support structure that you guys need to get through what you're going through. There's a lot of people who have been hit recently in our community, and we just want to send them a lot of love. So this whole canvas is dedicated to you. And so that's what, usually we have a whole bunch, but that's this canvas. Today. Yeah, it's a good one for today. It's a good one and, for today. You know, we have so many wonderful, uh, you know, light keepers that are in our community here, and and those are the folks that capture the wishes that come up in here because there's so many that we couldn't possibly capture them all ourselves. So thank you guys to all of our light keepers who capture those wishes and put them on their canvases for for all of the perfect strangers out there in the world. There isn't such a more generous gift that you could give than sending some love out there to someone else. So thank you guys. Now, if you guys want to be part of these pre-shows that happen on Facebook, you've got to follow the Facebook page. We got a group. There's secret stuff that happens there, but you want to be on the Facebook page to catch the videos. Ooh. I'm going to be full disclosure, guys. There's going to be some soapboxes, and I just want to say before I crawl up on my product soapbox that this is not sponsored. These are just the heavy-handed, skewed, biased opinions that I have formed <laughs> over the years, <laughs> and you should know I have a real bias here. <laughs> sure. Okay, so you guys know that, but of course, you know, you've got to use in whatever you're doing, you've got to use what you have, you have to use what's in your budget, you have to use what works for you, because the best product is the one you use. That being said, yes. please allow me to gush now. Okay, so my secret weapon for this particular project is my Golden Soft Gel Gloss. Okay, um, this is very different than Mod Podge or other products. What I love about this is that it's super flexible. It has the most amazing body to it. It's, it's, if you haven't ever used it, it's fantastic. If you do multimedia and you bought those little sort of like boutique um, little gels, this, I believe, actually having done price comparison is better per ounce on price by a lot. So even though a lot of people think of Golden as pricey, it actually seems to be less pricey than many of the multimedia craft materials. Now, you're going to see a health and safety warning over here, and this is simply because, and, 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 and this is my gush point, this company really cares about you and they care about their employees and they care about the environment. So sometimes you will see more information on their packaging than you will from other companies. Soft gels traditionally really aren't associated with uh, any health thing. What they're trying to say to you here when you see this is like, they're just letting you know the stuff here has not been tested. Don't breathe it, don't eat it. Because gels in general, these kind of, they're kind of not tested. They're not really looked at maybe like in that in-depth way. Yeah. And so they're saying um, every known thing that everybody knows about is good. Don't set fire to it, eat it or drink it or breathe it. They right. say that on a lot of their products. They're still, they're the same as the other products. They just want you to know, be aware of just basic studio safety practices. Hmm. You know, basic stuff. Don't eat your paints. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which is like a weird problem. Now, Kelly was <laughs> asking, is that a medium? <clears throat> Hmm? Is, Kelly was asking, is that a medium? Yes, that is. This is my very, 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 very favorite uh, collage medium. And one of my favorite mediums, it's 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 softer than the heavy body, but it's not as mushy as the, um, the fluid. So it's like this, it, it's like, it's not like frosting. It's not like wet butter. Honestly, I haven't ever felt anything like it. And I feel like everything falls short. 
But like I said, it's a biased opinion. I have used a lot of things. No, there were and some other... so I they have informed that opinion, but that's that's where it comes from. No, there are some other people in here. They were saying like if they if they if they preferred like matte. Uh, a mat over oh, gloss, yeah, that's totally fine. heavy body. The finish over... is never. Um, I mean, like I kind of feel like on the glazy medium, sometimes gloss works a little differently, but mostly the finishes are a preference that you have. Is is the is the body the same? Heavy body, medium mm -hmm. body, soft body? Is that yeah. a preference? So if you get this soft gel, right? They're gonna in here in parentheses on this one. Yours should come in semi matte or gloss. Right. And I like gloss. Um, and then I kind of finish everything on the painting at the end with a varnish. We talked about uh, printouts and how we use these in multimedia and some extra thoughts. So I'm definitely going to varnish these because I'd like them to last a little longer. Um, but, you know, it's preference on right. that one. Just preference. But I, I honestly think that soft gel is not preference. I think it's a necessity. Yeah. That is not, however, verified by anybody else. <laughs> now, the reason why you converted me to using this stuff is mm -hmm. I like that it doesn't yellow or discolor. Or have, you do have you shown them the project yet, babe? This one? We're really far in to not be showing you guys when the project. You Hopefully you hung I may have shown it to him earlier and then may not okay. I'm not sure. Sorry, guys. I've just known my first cup of coffee, too. <laughs> of the map PDFs, it, and that's what we have on our website. Yep. You can download these PDFs. Yes, you can use magazines or other objects or old letters or anything that you want. Um, but I'm using this map PDF, and you can print those out. I'm going to use four for my 11 by 14 canvas because I want to kind of tear and mix it up. That's how I'm going to do it because I didn't want to like just make one map and then just print it big. I just wanted to have this map like feeling. Right. Right. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know, as I come along, I'm going to kind of fit it to the paper like you do uh -huh. and decide how I want to fit it. And then once I have that basic, I'm fitting it like this feeling, right? I'm going to tear some of it because this is going to be a combo of, um, paint and collage practice oh neat so when i do whenever i'm doing that um i love these sort of soft weird little edges i don't have any like specifically overwhelming like tear advice <laughs> other than to make it look torn up other than to make it look torn up i could do an acrylic ground on here if i wanted to but i think i'm gonna just paint around these edges and do some aging and patiquing and stuff like that so i I don't know if I feel like it's necessary. I think I'm just going to get into my soft gel. All my other little printouts are right here, you know, and you guys can have those. I didn't print these on any special setting. I'm going to just, this is something I learned when I was getting uh, my, uh, when I was studying advertising art at school. I'm going to do this weird kind of mounting technique where I put glue on the canvas, well, the gel, and on the sheet. And then lay and burnish it down. It's a, sometimes referred to as dry mounting if you're using rubber cement. And I'm going to try to smooth this out as much as possible. Spatulas can be really nice. You can get a lot of specialty burnishing tools to do that. One of the things that I like about the soft gel over other products is the lack of wrinkling. Right. <laughs> other stuff is so heavy and... Huh? I'm going to zoom in oh. so they can see the lack of wrinkling. Yeah, there's no wrinkling. And it shouldn't, if I do this process, if I spread the gel on the back and I spread the gel on the canvas and then I fix it very quickly and brush it down, I should see very little to no wrinkling. If I see wrinkling, I'm going to use my brush to work it out. To push it out. This is my number 30, and it's a pretty good stiff brush. And so what I would say about that is just use one of your stiffer brushes that can bully your paper. Ooh, Ruby would like to know, can she burn the edges? Uh, if it's safe with your printer ink, sure. I mean, I've certainly done it, and I'm still alive. But mm. I don't know that's a testimony to safety. <laughs> I would definitely read your safety sheets whenever you're setting fire to pigments or anything in your house. That's a good piece of advice. I'm, I'm, I, I love the pirate nature of this, of to say, burn the maps. Burn and, the maps. But, you know, I think that that's some good advice. You should be careful when setting anything afire. Anything check, afire. Check your material safety on all of that. And, you know, of course, we have a, a, a YouTube show, so we have to be overly careful when we tell yeah. you to be careful about not burning them. Or just careful at all because, you yes. know, you guys... I would feel, you know, I, I'm going to do my best not to harm you in your house. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna say err on the on the side of conservative. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. you're not going to be doing any weird challenges or 
<laughs> you know, you can you can research that yourself if, you're, if it's not it's you know it's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to throw a little of my soft gel up here on the canvas, and then I'll throw it on on this again. I just want to make sure that I've got nice thick coatings. Right. Oh, I just it's I have to tell you, if you've never used this product before, if you've used anybody else's product, this is the weirdest feeling thing. It's like it's there and not there it at the like, same time. It looks like frosting. It does, but it doesn't feel like it. It's so crazy. Right. And I'm, you know, I'm thick about it, but it's going to dry pretty quickly. And I really I enjoy it. I'm not going to dip my brush. I'm going to resist dipping my brush in the jar because I don't want to contaminate it because you can really contaminate art product. Oh, I'm going to do it. Uh, uh, oh, no. <laughs> you can contaminate art products. And I'm just trying to move quickly so my mount is good. And that's generally what your palette knives are kind of for. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to maybe position this way. All right. It's That's, stacked maps. Well, you won't like even it. see it the way that we're going to paint it. These are layers. These are textures. Yeah, no, it's cool. I, now, I don't I want that white there. I mean, I could get rid of it, but I'm going to just tear here. Tear. See, I'm not even... It's, it's, not, it's, it's not terribly important. It becomes background. It is the background, and if it goes around the edge, you can just gel it down. It'll still frame. If anything lifts up, right, like you didn't have a good adhesion, that's what you do. You lift up and put it back in. Are you guys, I don't know if you guys have ever done any of this before. This is the way to do it. This saves you so much aggravation. This is, if you're, you know, I can't tell you, you don't want to enter a show and, and have your collage buckling unintentionally. It's not a good look. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good look, guys. Mm. This is fun, fun, fun stuff. Are we ready for the Absolutely. last piece of paper? Yes. And it looks like I only needed three. But you know what? That's okay because sometimes in life you give yourself a little extra. <laughs> now I know we had touched on this in the uh, on on the Facebook there, mm -hmm. but since we have a little bit of time while you're putting this last piece yeah. on there, uh, you know, you we know that you love Mod Podge for what it's used for. Yes, but, but this may not be the best place. No, this is so. Here's the thing. This is why I'm saying I have a biased opinion. Okay. Mod Podge is a perfectly fine product for multimedia collage. Okay, cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I use soft gel because Mod Podge can soften with moisture because it's a PVA glue and I'm wanting something a little more stable, a little more archival. In my opinion, and I haven't done a product-to-product -product, uh, examination of this yet, um, Mod Podge is a moisture product, and so sometimes I find I get wrinkling in it that I don't get with the soft gel. But again, haven't, that's why I was like biased opinion. <laughs> I um, started forming uh, collaging opinions because these were, collages were super big in the, the 90s with the rustic kind of art yeah. <laughs> that was going on. And so I had to try a lot of different ways to get this effect. And through that, just started feeling like, you know, man, there is only one way to get this stuff on a canvas. Yep. Where it's going to stay. Now, if you're on a flexible canvas, like not a board, wow, it gets more important. And this is super flexible and won't crack on you. There we go. Now smooth that out. See, and where I start to have a wrinkle, I can just really easily smooth, smooth it out. But I'm not creating wrinkles that I don't intend to have. Now, you, you also plan on painting over this, which affects... There's going to be paint over this, which the soft gel is going to lend itself to quite a lot. Gonna maybe put a weird little spot in the middle there. Opinions that I have. So many, many, many opinions that I have. How you guys doing? Are you tearing paper? Does anyone else find the sound of tearing paper like good? It's a good sound for me. Is it a good sound? Well, mostly. Good. Mostly, mostly, mostly like a very good sound. I'm I'm impartial. <laughs> you have no I'm feelings on the noise of paper. None. I'm just kind of breaking up this space in here. I'm coming right here, and I will hit you with a little bit because I want you to affix pretty well. If if you know if you're doing any of this stuff, you know you want to be just sort of like, don't be so wrapped up in it that you miss your opportunity to fix your piece down. <laughs> Sometimes you can think so long about the placement of an object that you just place no objects. If that makes sense. I'm going to rinse this out. Um, you really do. Anytime you're varnishing, gelling any of the polymers, this is basically what the paint is made out of 
without the pigment, by the way. You can add raw pigment to this, too. Oh. Um, okay, talk yeah. to her about that blank canvas lockup. <laughs> yeah, when it gets you- to be, and you have, you know, uh, if you're one of those people who's really struggling through that, what I would say for this project is tear your pace, paper, okay? Yeah. If you're a perfectionist, this is your strategy for survival. Tear up your paper, arrange it, give yourself a timer, say like, I'm going to, I'm going to make up my mind by 30 minutes. (laughs) Otherwise you could do it for days and you give yourself a timer and then you give yourself a chance to look at it and prep everything and then go real fast. And then you have to just let it go. Whatever it is, however it goes, you let it go. Look, I got gel everywhere. Um, You just want to let it go. Otherwise, you'll be wrapped up in your piece forever. They're happy brushes. They've been gelled. Now, there's an interesting layer effect. The only thing that can go on next actually is our crow piece. And then I've got to paint a bit. And then I paint her in. And then I can put in my feather and my roses because of the way they're placed. Hmm. I could also get them all in and paint around them if I felt like it. I'm trying to think what's easier for you guys. The I think link. it's going to be easier for you guys to paint around actually at this stage of your collaging because we've never introduced this to the channel before. Now, so I'm going to just keep going. Now, a link to all of these materials are in the description below on, yep. and found on our website. Yeah. Where they you just can print them. out a little PDF and yeah. cut these out and use them to make your own little collage. Yeah. And we have some thoughts on uh, sizing and all of that from that uh, Facebook thing. Some measurements and some things because I had I had you guys ask, which was a really good question, and I was gonna do a lot of printouts on this, and then I got sick this week, so I was like, no, we're just working today. Right. It happens sometimes. We're just. I'm not gonna use that brush again because I put it in water, and oh, I no. really, really want to avoid moisture where I don't have to have it. Okay. So now that I've got this space, I'm gonna take this guy here, and he comes off the canvas. So I'm actually gonna place him with edges hanging off the canvas. Because I can come in with an X-Acto knife after and trim. A lot of times you'll see me like working a collage and I'll have all these weird edges. And I trim when I'm done. Nothing, it's not like for some particular reason that's just my process. Is I like to get it all laid out where I'm super happy and then just kind of trim after because I'm going to frame it. Right? If I'm doing a gallery wrap canvas, then I will fussy cut it to the edge. But this would go in a frame, so I'm not going to. I now have another big brush and I am continuing that first method I demoed with this guy. And I'm going to make sure I have enough on here for it not to dry out on me in these very, very dry conditions. And I'm going to make sure, you know, I give myself some extra room over here for that. Hopefully you guys are enjoying that process wherever you need to be. And I hope you guys are having an interesting holiday. Now, right now, uh, you guys, if you didn't make the Facebook, (laughs) you might be like, but there's this line. And what do I do about that? Does this mean I have to go in with a razor blade and cut that out? It actually doesn't. You do not need to fussy cut with this method because we're going to come back and we're going to do all this painting and aging and and patinaing so that the paper is kind of blended all in together with these different bits. And people will actually have a great deal of trouble telling what pieces that you um, painted and what pieces that you didn't. I'm going to do my rose arrangement now, which is my two roses. Two roses. Right, so I've got my my little rose roses here. So this big rose, and that's forward. i got to put that on last. And then my two little facing roses. So hopefully they're good. We'll see. We'll see. I got one coming here in the corner, and I want to make sure I've got some gel, soft gel here. I will bring this right here. I want to really fill up this corner with roses. Is anybody else trying to collage with me? I hope so. Oh, yes. And everybody's loving this. And this is is a really... I'm going to flip this over so that I have room accessible to me i think it was jennifer who mm-hmm. i saw who said this is definitely going into their into her multimedia uh, uh journal oh good and and so i'm gonna go back and see but there were there were many people that were saying that they were super excited about this so i want to put this little rose right here 
right, in some way, facing kind of this direction. And I'm going to put their little friend in the middle, so to kind of like make it a little rose arrangement. When I designed this, I just did this digitally. I did all these processes, I just did them digitally. Now, with some of your printers, they will lift a little of the ink. There's a couple little fixes for that. There's a lot of products for that. So if that really gets to you, there's some things that you can do. You can also, believe it or not, sometimes like seal them like a spray sealant. <laughs> and then that temporarily holds them down. And then you come back and uh, put them where you want them. Now I'm definitely going to want to face the opening of this rose a particular kind of way. Right? And I'll have to paint these all in together, but it's going to blow your mind when we do. These are just our guidance. These are just our thoughts as we go. And they create the space that I can work around. Yeah. All right. And the reason I'm rinsing this out and putting this to the side is I don't want to get moisture in my brush because I don't want wrinkling, but I also don't want sticks after I'm done. So I've got to get enough out of it that I have a chance to soap wash these. Now, Catherine was asking a really interesting question here. He expect sticky, messy fingers. Look, I don't know if you can see this. Is it just if okay? I have the worst manicure. I apologize <laughs> to all of the internet right now. About what's going on with my hands? You guys are always so forgiving, but she hasn't felt well. <laughs> now, you 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 created this collage image mm -hmm. out of licensed images mm -hmm. that, you, that you picked out. Yes. And you have we have the ability to to allow people to use those licensed for images. the student purposes. For the student purposes, but you can't reuse them for other things. Like you couldn't take these images and then put them on your website as a wallpaper, no, no, no. But, but you could sell the painting that you make from them. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So, okay. so these are reference images for you to download for this educational purpose and for you to use on your own personal painting. But not to open up a digital photo reference site. No. <laughs> no. And so, you know, it's uh, just, you know, and that's, that was a really, you know, Catherine was just wanting to know, are we okay to use this? Is this all right? So, yeah. Yeah. It's, the, yeah. We, we try to make sure that we provide you guys with, uh, with, with as many resources as we can. As we can. And you'll find all of those on theartsherpa.com. I'm going to plug our website. Yeah. Theartsherpa.com. Plug, plug, plug. Plug, 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 plug. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? <laughs> I don't know. They, they tell us that. Okay. They tell us uh, 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 lo lots of that. We don't know how to do that very well. No, we know how. It's just, well, I mean, like, really at this point... <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to teach art here, so... <laughs> I just think we're not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're perfectly fine. I just don't think we care. We're well, supposed... Maybe, maybe we'll care soon. Maybe that's what it is. We, we care about you guys. Right. We yeah. care that you get a good painting. You know. Oh, the people are like, sub, 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 sub. And then they're like, where do all my subs go? I don't know. We didn't know where they came from to begin with, so... <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> We don't know where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone notice what a nice, smooth surface I have going here? Yeah. Now I'm going to clean up my space and get, you know, I let my gel be all messy because I'm working at a crazy pace. You may, you know, if you really, really will have trouble remembering how to paint these roses, you can fussy cut that one if it's just something that gets to you. But I'm going to show you everything I'm doing because we're going to loosen these up. We're going to make them super painterly. It's going to be crazy. You're going to be like, wait, what? Now, that was another thing that hmm. I want to... Uh, you have to excuse me. I have a little little bit okay. of a head cold here. So uh, I understand. One of the things I've noticed here is that, uh, and just sort of anecdotally, is that this 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 soft gel doesn't seem to lift the pigment from the printouts. No, I just it just it gives me no problems. And and you may find that with some other yeah materials. You'll so just find test it moves stuff. It wrinkles stuff. So, you'll find yeah all kinds of annoying or some uh, problems. Yeah, and that can like vary getting with this cap back product. on. So just, you know, and I don't know if the one that you have at home will or won't do that, but just, you know, that's uh, something to keep in mind. And, you know, if it is doing that, there's sealants that you can spray on stuff. Oh, yeah. You could do like a spray varnish on your printouts to just sort of tack the, the ink down. Yep. If your ink's moving that much, I would expect it to be, this is the peeling stage. If you're a person who enjoys peeling, this is your favorite stage of the is project. like when you were a kid when you used to put the glue Peel. all over your hands that it dried and peel. It off. Peel it all off. Now I'm gonna get some of my. Oh, we're gonna have to scoot that over because it's behind. Oh, the... okay. That's all right. We'll do that in a minute. It's like. Whoop. What, what? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. How about I just flip this over? Oh, yeah, you could do that. And then I'll reorient over to the other side. There you go. Does that work? Yeah, for Probably me. Cool. Okay, I've got a couple browns here, and I'm gonna just patina and age and 
you know, rust out this whole little canvas and make it seem very, very old and also hide the paper. Now there's a level above this that one does for fine art, which is like you're very particular about what you print out with. And um, I usually, when I'm doing a fine art piece, I actually go to uh, vintage shops and collect ephemera. You can find ephemera on eBay too, packages of ephemera, it's super fun. Sometimes there's digital printouts. Um, and then, you know, I would collage that and I would take a modeling paste and sculpt around my paper edges and hide them completely. Ooh. It was super fun. Well, I mean, if that's your kind of fun, <laughs> it might be super fun. And I'm trying to decide, like, I may want to put a little more soft gel out that I'm going to use to make my paint transparent where I need to. Right here. Oh, I love this stuff. It's the craziest feeling in the world. Again, price this against some of the beautifully packaged little bottles of uh, art alchemy in the crafter sector. If ever you see something over on like, uh, I'm not going to name a specific store, but you have something on one side of the store in a little jar and it's like gesso, go check the other side of the store against Golden and calculate the outs price because so far I've found that Golden is uh, actually much lower. You may find something different depending on where you live. But that's my experience. So I'm going to just take a number 10 brush, also known as Goldilocks, and I'm going to start hiding some of this paper, some of this stuff. Let me put out a little black. All the colors are listed in the description below. And we talked about edging these, you know, burning and edging these uh, edges. So I'll start with that work. Right, even get a little brown in here. And let's just come around our little edges, painting this up. Just using uh, some of the soft gel for some translucency if I need it. You can also use the gloss medium and varnish, but I did not put it out today. And look at this, I can paint very nicely around all these objects. Neat. Starting to blend in the different objects to my focal points. You could even do what's called a rouge or a blush on this canvas to age it further once it's all dry. I'm just going to continue to paint out. And again, like if you love this technique, we can talk about visiting this again and maybe I'll show you how to hide that paper edge. Ah. Uh -huh. Where no one can tell that it was a collage. I kind of sometimes like the collage effect. I like that there's that element, those extra implied textures and lines. But depending on, you know, your preference, you may have some different feelings. I'm getting into my bird sienna. So I have, I have my Mars black, I have my bird sienna, my yellow ochre, my titanium white, white my bird umber, and that soft gel. So that's what I'm no. using for this old map. And see how it's like kind of like these colors? Yeah. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just sort of cross hash stroke and age and disperse some of this map. See how we're doing? Yeah. Look at those edges disappear. Other reason soft gel is such an excellent option. Getting my burnt sienna and my black and my gel, and I'll just keep rotating it around, hiding my edges, creating this beautiful piece. Hmm. Now, let's just say if mm -hmm. someone saw this and fancied it on their, say, armoire or mm -hmm. on their headboard or mm -hmm. some other interesting piece of furniture. Right. Would you be, would you think this would translate? Yes. Ooh. This technique does translate onto furniture and wood and other surfaces. Um, if you're doing a piece of furniture, you're going to, I, I, I would do a little looking into the printer quality and the inks and how long those are going to last. And I would definitely seal that piece with something that has a very good UV protectant in it so that all your hard work and embellishment lasts as long as possible because those are the type of pieces that family members really want to inherit and will take it very personally. You didn't prep it for them. <laughs> but, they're like, but I love that piece. Now around here, I'm just going to come around and just for this part at the lower edge below the roses, I'll make sure that this blends. I'll take this yellow around the rose. I'm kind of hoping you guys get excited about this idea that you can mix up products like this, mix up ideas or images that you can cut out of magazines or books or old photographs. 
I had a yeah. whole a whole bunch of stuff that exhibited for a while that was like based on that. And I was, do you remember that? I was like just sourcing the internet for all the, the weird ephemera and I was always at every antique shop. And I'd find these old pictures and stamps and maps and love letters and I'd make these pieces that were all about that. I'm just taking in here. And you can see that as we go, you can just move this paint. Look, I'm just cross hatching. But what does this do? This is aging the map, isn't it? And it's blending that edge. See how we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Where'd the paper go? So, yeah, you can sit there with your X Acto knife and your cutting board and fussy cut. Fussy, fussy, fussy. All you want to be fussy till the cows come home. I don't know where the cows were. Probably in the city because this is Houston. But. <laughs> <laughs> but you may just be like, you know, I just need to get, I'm just like, it's a kind of weekend and I just need to get into creative practice. I'm going to come around here and I'm going to just paint delicately around these objects. Is everybody playing and having fun? Yes. And see, so just paint right here. And you have to remember everything you see, you're going to come back and touch all of this with some paint. Does anybody remember an artist named Thomas Kincaid? I think I heard of him. You think you might have heard of him? Maybe. So he had... No, um, not a terribly big fan, but I heard of him. <laughs> you heard of him. He had, uh, probably not since um, Walter Keene, since the Keene family, has there been such a large printing operation going on. And they would print out jaclays, and they would just touch them with paint. Just yeah. touch them, a little bit of paint, and then you pay like a lot of money for that jacle. Yeah. And that's kind of the same principle here, isn't it? I printed out an object. You could get a bunch of objects off of uh, Pixabay or the Creative Commons. Like if you were looking for old photos, if this idea, uh, I did a beautiful piece um, with my mom. We did a collaborative piece about the racetrack uh, Caliente. Ah. Uh, at the turn of the era, and we, we put in all these, like, vintage musical instruments and horses. And that was about actually sourcing Creative Commons images and old photos and collaging them together with texture. It was a really fun piece. Nice. Yeah. I think I may have, like, totally damaged some heirlooms, though. <laughs> Not somebody's personal heirlooms. I'm just, like, sometimes people have seen the piece and like, do you have any idea how much that oh. stamp is worth? I'm like, it's worth more now. I made it. <laughs> I like... Uh... I, I like I'm how just mixing up my browns. Yeah, we there's a lot of diverse feelings around our day here, and this is this is a really, <laughs> uh, you think you're really validating a lot of feelings today. Yee. That you know, some days, you know, Valent maybe maybe tomorrow half off chocolate day is better than Valentine's Day. I live for half off chocolate day. That is my. Fa we were saying over on Facebook, John and I don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. Not because we are not for love. We're for love. Yeah. Um, but just because I don't really like to stand in line and, and uh, just wait in line to go eat dinner for, what is it, what is the average now? It's like $200 for a couple to sit and eat dinner at some like price fix restaurant, you know. Uh, it's a lot of pressure too, yeah, to just be like joyful and about it. And there's a time when that demonstration is, is like called for. And that's, is there you know, maybe, but, <laughs> you know, know, when, when, you know, when if you're, it's your thing, when you're a young buck trying to impress your <laughs> new girlfriend, did you seriously use those words? I don't know. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying <laughs> young, buck. young bucks. They're out there. I, I was a young buck. Wasn't I? I don't know if I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I would call you a buck. You didn't really have that young buck kind of no, thing. No, I was sort of just a sweetheart. I don't, I don't. Was I? Yeah. You okay. Anyway. Well, there's guys out there who just, you know. They, they are young bucks. They, they, got to, they got to impress the girls. They got to and, impress the girls. And that's totally respectable. It is. And it, but you Paint know, this for the girls, and that is being, like, pretty point, impressive. Look at that, guys. Yeah. So you see how we're just sort of aging that out, and we're creating that. Um, if you, you can age everything further, right? If you want to age it further, so this is quite rich and this is quite dark. If you want to take it back further, what you can do is you can take the white pigment tinged with just a little bit of the yellow ochre and a lot of the soft gel and even come through here and you just, it's just transparent, right? And you can patina all of this even more. You can take it lighter or darker depending on your preference. But everywhere you find that you're putting these brush strokes, right? 
it gives this the, the feeling that you painted something. It'll be so interesting when you see people look at it and they're going to really struggle to know how you made it. And be like, how'd they make it? I don't get it. You know, always leave the elements that are super important to you. So like, I really like this compass. I won't lose it. So I'm going to make sure that it remains in there even if I patina this. Yep. And then I'm going to have a sip of coffee and let this all rest for a minute and maybe even dry it with a hair dryer so I can get the next part in. Yeah. Pretty easily. Now, Joy was just asking, can I use an actual photo? Yeah. You, could you can use photos. And sometimes photos will last longer than printouts for the computer. Mm -hmm. Because they, they, a lot of times they try, you know, mm -hmm. photos use archival inks that are designed to last and be uh, infrared resistant and all sorts of, or, you know, UV resistant. And they have all sorts of stuff that just makes them, you know. If we have any scrapbookers in the room, any scrapbookers in the room, raise your hand. Oh, there's, I think like everybody here just raised their hand because they're <laughs> all here just having a good time talking about this. So a piece that I did, um, which was really wonderful, there were some sisters who had been together for a while, you know, they were older and there was a gift the family wanted to do for them. And they had all these old pictures and they had all these old letters. And so I took those down to a specialty house in Houston and I had them scanned and printed out with better inks because I didn't want to, you know, take their families priceless heirlooms and paint on them though you could and i took those back and made a collage piece with with foil and it was like this whole story of them and it had their love letters and the words and all of them together for this big beautiful like 4860 dining room piece and it was so stunning now robin was just asking she really likes using art boards which are like a gessoed wood panel mm -hmm. are those okay to use i prefer them you prefer yeah they're Especially for this, because they're not flexing, right? So then I don't have to worry about the canvas bouncing or blending or ripping or doing any of the things that they do. Well, I'm just kind of blending this around, just making sure it's just sort of yeah, we'll rough and raw and weird. We'll demonstrate some of those here so you guys can see the difference between Isn't them. that crazy? I'm going to dry it. Okay, you're dry, dry that. I'll, I'll explain why we had Oh, yeah. no, this is... You <laughs> All right. So normally I would say, you know, tell explain to you about that you don't want to use high heat around your acrylic paint. And that's probably true for your mediums as well. You just really want to use the air to let it uh, cure, to help it cure and get a good skin on it so that your next subsequent coats don't pick up that the, the undercoats and, and mix and give you unexpected results. So especially with acrylics, this drying layer is really helpful for making you get good effects. Um, and so I think that, uh, uh, so I just saw some questions come up. So I'm hopefully that it answers some of the questions around that. Don't forget, if you go to theartsherpa.com, you can find all the resources for this. There'll be a link to that in the description below. But there'll be a, a, a link to all of the materials that we use here, the, the reference photo. There is a traceable. Um, there's the PDF, downloadable, uh, you know, materials that you can use to m montage and cut up all the stuff your own. Uh does it, and and you guys, are, I just saw a question come up. Does it make the paper hard? Generally, when uh, you, this does create a, a more rigid surface when these are, are painted, kind of like a, uh, you know, very similar to what I would call like a, 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 a you know, when you when you use glue and you layer up the paint or you layer up your your peeling, <laughs> a peeling. So Sorry. they were just asking, does uh, when you use this coating on there, does it make the paper hard? Um, no. Oh, no. I thought no. that it did. I no, it, it made... this does not. Um, if you're going to uh, seal it with a, a hard um, activated varnish, you could, but only do that on boards, not canvases. Otherwise, you get cracking. Um, if you're using craft paints, be sure and you read all the products that you're selling with because sometimes they're for, they seem like they're acrylic paint, but there's actually for pottery and they'll end up cracking. Um you know, it's just basically however long you want this to last, you're looking at that finish. Uh, the soft gel in and of itself will just um, create a flexible archival adhesion for all these products. Cool. Yeah, which is why I love them. And so now we're getting into the painting part. Now we're getting into the painting part. So I've got some, I've got three reds here, and that's just because I wanted a lot of options. I've got my cad yellow. I have my phthalo blue and green, and I have a little gold paint as an option. And the fluid black and white is just if I need some detail and I need it to flow off my brush. So that's also kind of optional. Yeah. I'm putting out my cad red light. And I feel like I had some alizarin crimson. I'm going to put out my phthalo blue and green, and I'm going to start painting some of this in before I put in 
my beautiful maiden. Oh, okay, so you're not gonna you, you don't need to sketch her in yet. Nope. Okay, so is there a traceable for her? There is a traceable for her, and once this is dry, sterile paper, I tested this, works just beautifully on it. There's a link in the description below for that. Okay. I would probably use um, white on this one because you'll be able to see it, and it won't bleed into whatever you're doing. I'm just putting this paint out wherever, <laughs> willy-nilly, like you do. Well, like you do. <laughs> like I do. Now I have the Iridescent Bright Gold Fine by Golden. This is not necessary. It just can be a nice touch. I also like to gold foil on pieces like this. So that's really about what you prefer, what you're excited about. I'm looking for one of my small... Uh, for, I, as every Okay, here's a small. I'm getting my number four art cat's tongue. And I'm going to talk about my roses a little bit to my roses. Talk to your roses? A little bit, and I'm going to take my blue over to my alizarin and make sure oh. I've got a nice purpley color. So I've taken a thalo blue. Up just a touch there? Yeah. What? Okay. Oh, to my, oh. Uh, and apparently I couldn't. Sorry. <laughs> we, th these are the big canvases that we got. I got by accidentally ordered mm -hmm. the wrong size. It's okay. And this is why. Just, <laughs> they just take up a lot of room. I, I didn't know when I ordered the uh, Doesn't one matter. Size too large. They hold paint. It's all good. This is just art. Now, I've got this dark color, and so I'm going to come into my roses, and wherever I'm seeing a shadow or a shape like that, just go ahead and if it stands out to you and you strongly see it, go ahead and paint it. Right? Paint those shadows in. Like I'm just coming along to feather this out. Right? I can sit there and say, there's oh, there's a shadow right here where these two might even be joining, and maybe there's one under here. You know, just uh, just show a little shadow as you're going. I'm gonna keep bringing these little shadows around where I feel like I might have them to talk about that. I'm gonna get, I love getting right into it. These little brush strokes are fantastic. By the way, painting, believe it or not, painting on photographs, painting on pictures of things, will help you learn how to see those values and colors. So if you're ever struggling with something, how to mix it, how to evaluate it, that is a great way to do it. Underestimated by, in my opinion, by everybody. See how we're painting along? I like it. I do too. I'm gonna just keep this dark here and pull this, because I can come in and with a highlight and I wanna make sure that I've got a little of this everywhere. Because this is how it's going to feel like it's hand-painted, weirdly. Right? Weirdly, this is where the hand-painting feeling comes from. I'm going to take my alizarin and my quinacridone together and a little of my white. Yeah. And then come in and add some other colors that might be there. Paint in some petals. I'm just going to... Give myself some head paints. Because you're just painting in some roses, right? Yeah. A little bit loosely, a little bit strangely. But you're just trying to say, let's see how I'm back. See, it starts to blend. It's the craziest thing. Back up from your painting when you're doing this project a few times because in it you may have a panic attack like that you just lost your mind. And you will need to back up to see the forest for the trees. As I'm going, I'm going to get right up into the white. And everywhere I see a highlight that's real light, I'm going to add some with paint. <laughs> it's just a crazy thing that I'm going to do. To keep this looking very loose and painterly, even though it wasn't. <laughs> Fastest roses I've ever done in my life. <laughs> Are you guys having fun with this? Is this crazy? This is amazing. Fun stuff. And you can slow down and take as much time with it as you want. You can do, like, you can sit down and power through a ton of journal pages this way. But see how I didn't have to fussy cut these roses out, and now they look like they're a painted part of my canvas? Yeah. And by being loose and blocky with it, now that's my method of sort of hiding, hiding the origin of the image. Yeah. You're not really trying to be deceptive. It's just sort of an art artistic decision that you're making about what you reveal and what you hide. 
I'm going to go ahead and just put a little of my cad red into my quinacridone. And I'm going to come here on my feather. I'm going to paint some of this edge here. A couple places with this color. Not everywhere. I'm just painting a couple places. And then I think the cad red light will be really interesting on this outer edge. So maybe you put a little alizarin crimson into the cad red light so that it's knocked back just a touch. Look at that. Little feathers. But suddenly, that's going to start taking on a hand-painted feel, doesn't it? Yeah. Weird. Weird, weird, weird. I'll just add a little yellow. I'm going to create a little highlight in a few places. Now it looks like I just was like, so much time I just painted a quill pen. So yeah, we're looking back up. There you go. Looking and that's good. And popping. Yeah. Now I really like the idea of the drop shadow underneath this. I feel that it creates a bunch of interesting stuff, but I can't do it till I do my heart splash. So I'm gonna just go ahead and enforce some of the dark values here. I'm just adding a little of my black just to create a little dark value and I'll start talking about it a little bit, a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this weird heart splash after she's in and then I can drop the um, drop shadow down. And we're gonna hand paint the little heart splash. Anything that you feel like you're not loving how it's showing, you just come back with a little paint. You get your background neutral colors. You know, and you can just paint out that space and you know we're gonna have the drop shadow, but you, do you see what I'm saying? No, Anything no. that isn't resonating with you or you're like, oh, I don't feel like that's blending, you just come back and you change it. Let's add some pops of paint to our crow. And we're gonna add a little gold pop of everything too. Now the crow I'm gonna really, really play with because I'm gonna add a little of my blue and black together. And then I'm gonna pop a little white into that mix. That way when I'm coming here on the wing, all those places have just a little bit of this there. So he feels more painterly, more expressive. I'm removing that sense that he was printed out. If I take too much of him out, I'll lose his detail that the printer is giving me. So I have to be sparing about how much paint I use. But the, see the way that I take this paint and I, I break it up? Makes him feel like I painted him. It doesn't take a lot. So I went dark brown and I kind of feathered over into the clock. Now this little feather here is a wild opportunity for me because I can get a little of my white and my blue and then just paint this little feather and maybe get a little of my green and white here. I'm going to grab a little of my yellow so it was very bright because this feather was a little bit bright. Look at this. And I'm going to make this a bright one too, but I'm going to switch it up. That just changes everything, doesn't it? That could be a bright feather as well. That could be a bright feather as well. So I'm going to get my yellow and my red together. And I'm going to say, hey, I want some touches of paint here too. I'm very careful. I'm not painting it on my leaves, just touches. See what those touches are doing? I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. This is like really the funnest yeah. thing in the world to me. And every once in a while, you got to do something crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and my phthalo green. I might knock it back with a little burnt umber. And I'm going to come on the dark side of some of my leaves. And I'm going to paint in some very loose leaves around my roses. These are loose. Maybe around the crow's beak a little bit. Just something to show that there's these loose little leaves that are painted around there. And then once that's rinsed out, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make a bright green, super kind of poppy highlight. 
maybe half of those little leaves could have a little bright highlight so that we have some value sets there. Can we see the leaves yet? Oh yeah. We're doing pretty good. That's pretty painterly. I think this looks really cool. It's fun stuff. Now I kind of want these roses to be a little bit like those roses down there. So I'll definitely get my dark value color and putting, you know, some shadows here and there. I won't take out everything I have. I just am going to add enough of these brush strokes to make this feel as if I whip, 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 painted it out. See how I'm not being like really fussy? Yeah. And some, it's, <laughs> it's an intentional choice. So I'm gonna take a little of my alizarin in my quinacridone, smidge of white so that it pops. And add a little bit of this around too. Not everywhere, just somewhere a little bit. just taking it and helping it find its space. Now let's get that bright highlight, right? Which is yeah. the quinacridone and a lot of white. Because we know that that was really popped on our other roses. And add some of those where you felt like you saw highlights. Hear that? Let's back up and see how it's looking. Because it's all crazy up close. Isn't he nice? Now, something crazy that I didn't do on the image, but that you can do here that will make this very powerful, is I'm gonna take a little of my black and my brown and some soft gel if I need it to just make it a little transparent. And we know we're gonna drop a shadow over here. You can drop a shadow. around some of these objects. So one of the things that'll make something feel like it's really on some space or playing in space is the idea that it's casting a shadow to whatever's underneath it. Just enjoying that. And we see the shadow. Let's see how the shadow is looking. Pop, pop. Oh, there's a shadow. So now it's kind of 3D. And all I did is I'm just, I'm just lining to the side of it and letting that shadow drop down. Now I'm going to take my detail brush and I'm going to make his eye so bright it is going to freak you out. I'm going to put out a little of my fluid white. Just a little bit. I'm gonna get it on the tip of my detail brush. This is my number one round, so it's got a very small point. And I might even have to put on my glasses to see this, like you do. And I will very carefully add a little highlight to his eye. Maybe even a little bit to the beak. And he should just start to pop. Well, it's little, few little highlights here and there. And then I, I, I even sort of like these little dots in this feather. So I'm going to get in there and add a little dot in the feather. Look at that go. How's that looking? Let's back up. Is he popping? He's graphic now. And I can take a little of my gold paint on that same detail brush. And I can come here and add just a smidge of that metallic feeling. Now, you could use any gold paint you have. I really like the gold paint I'm using. It doesn't oxidize. It doesn't patina. It's highly pigmented for a truly metallic paint. But it's still transparent enough that I can kind of paint over what I have there. So there's this weird sheen, but it still has tonality. You don't have to do this part. It's just something nice you can do if you wanted to. And I'm going to come in and define the key this way, too. Where the key just is a little more metallic than it was. And then I'm going to wipe that off, get my white paint, and come back and give it some metallic reflections that would have been there. 
so that you can see the key. There we're doing. And now that key feels painted. Weird stuff in life. Weird stuff. Right. If you want to be tighter, you can get in there and be really detailed about everything. If you want to be looser, you can back up and be loose about everything. Now I'm going to sketch in my girl in paint. You're welcome to transfer that traceable on with your serial paper, but I'm going to just sketch her in. You're just going to sketch it in? I'm just going to sketch her in. I'm going to do it with like a, mm, maybe burnt sienna, burnt umber, something like that. But I'm going to say like right here, I've got the girl and she's going to come down. So let's, let's give her some gesture, some space. And I want her arm here. I'm going to say, I know, it's crazy that I'm freehanding her in. I'm in the same person. All right, I'm going to give myself a little ball to start with. Head! Huh. Whatever works, right? I'm just talking about space and height and everything I'm doing I can paint around or change. Now, she's got this sort of beautiful S-curve to her body, so I'm going to get that gesture right here. I don't forget it. That just helps me keep track of what I'm trying to talk about. And I'm going to take her dress way off the painting. Right? I'm just sketching her in right now. Once I know where she is, I'm going to sit there and say, okay, let's give her some shoulders. So we've got a nice head here. It has to be believable head, right? It's got to be at least, your body is about eight heads high. So whatever you're doing has to, six to eight heads is what most people are. Kids are like four. So whether you're a broncoozy and you're making these long, crazy sculptures or you're freehanding uh, a figure in in something. I always like it when I paint live and I do stuff like this because it really throws people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to give some shoulders across here. Because, you know, just to have something to anchor her body on. I'm going to get into my green. And I think I'll do the undertones in my little green here. So we're going to say that she's got a little hip. And I will probably exaggerate her. I won't even lie. I've got to bring this down. And then she's going to have an arm coming back. Now, I've changed her positioning. So that in mind, I will have to keep that in mind and bring that arm under. Under the feather. Doesn't particularly worry me. I'm just saying that's what I'm doing. Mm. Still going to be the same painting. Well, basically, same thing. Arm will be at a different place. Don't really care. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have the traceable if it's like super, super like, oh no. Okay. This piece, I'm just much more worried that you guys know about the techniques. Now, I'm going to take her arm right up to the metal, and I'm going to take the green right up to the metal in this because, right? She would be. showing up in that kind of a way. I'm going to bring the green down that way. Now her other arm, let's take the green and the blue, is going to come here, bend at the elbow, and go behind her back, because that's where the knife is being held. I always know where my elbow is by where I put my waist, because elbows bend about at the waist fulcrum. And once I have that in, I can like throw her in real fast. I'll take this uh, number eight ruby satin and I'll throw in the ender painting to her so I can start building up her layers. No, they were but asking. But again, you have the traceable. Yeah, they, they were asking there. Hmm. Looking at the background, the maps, there, yeah. there seems to be a bit of like a white sheen over the top of that. Yes. Is that on from... this one or on the original one? Oh, on this one here. Yeah, I was a I was like aging it. I was like milking it out. You, you did that intentionally yeah. by adding some white. Paint. I added some white over it to age it out. Okay, you so could leave it dark if your house lends itself to a darker color scheme. Don't worry about going dark. I, I think that there was. I think Jen Jen was just asking: Is it the is it the gloss medium that dries cloudy or? Is oh it, no, did... that was a pigment that I add. Gloss medium. The golden mediums do not cloud up, so it's not like a varnish. So you know how like with a varnish, if you if you have a little problem there, it could cloud up on you. I'm going to really fold this skirt out. And I may even do some gold filigree on it. I'm thinking I will. Oh, nice. Yeah. This is a really excellent, excellent way to paint 
when you don't really um, draw a lot. Excellent, excellent way to paint. And I'm doing my brush strokes. I'm like pulling them down long. So that sort of implies the length of her body. And I'm going to keep sketching her in with my little smaller brushes. I've really only got one hand a little bit to worry about in the way that the skirt tucks over her other hand. So that's what I'm going to work out over here is this sort of skirt tucking situation. I'm going to make sure that the arm is long enough to be believable. I am still going to um, do a little splashy heart over her and still do its drop shadow. After it's all over, those things will stay the same. One of the nice things is you see how easy it was for me to erase the paint right there. I really like that. And get my blue and my... So the skirt tucks up over her arm, right? Yeah. So we're going to just give the skirt a little fold up. So she's tucked it. And we will continue this down like that. Look at that. Now, there's lots of different Simply. mediums and lots of different yes. things at home. So you can experiment with them at home and know you might get slightly different results. But that's what this is about. If you guys have something you already use and you prefer or you're just like, you know, my budget allows for this. Yeah. I can tell you as honestly as I can what I'm using and why. I'll tell you if I'm biased. Like I said, this, I'm biased to this product. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I really love it. But not because like I'm sponsored, just because I've used it a lot and I have come to form an opinion about it that's very strong. And I really haven't looked at every single gel, right, yeah. on the market at this time. Doesn't mean I won't ever look at every gel and then I might have a more like fact-based opinion, which will probably still shake out the same. <laughs> so see how like now all of a sudden the shape, the gesture of her has started to come together. We're seeing her, we recognize that she's, you know, here. She's got her little flowing dress. And this is gonna let us enjoy this figure. Guess what you could have also done? And I hope some of you have figured this out. What's that? Um, hey, hello. <laughs> the other thing that you could have also done is print her out and cut her out and paint over her too. So you're not locked oh. out of this project, which is why I ranked it at a two hoot instead of a three hoot. It's because you have the option to not paint any part of this except sort of paint on top of it like an embellishment. Yeah. And then the part that even made it a two hoot is the fact that, you know, there's some learning curve in here. Now I'm going to lighten her dress underneath like you do because she's got some values in her green. I'm going to first start with a little yellow ochre and a little of my... Uh, phthalo blue, but there's still some burnt on my brush And I'm gonna say the front of her hip is a little bit lighter right here. I Can see that a lot of this. I'm not too worried about it's really really under her hair everything down her back is Really covered by hair, but I'm gonna pull this down. Ooh, I like that. highlight. Okay. Very I just very saw that. Definitively yeah, it and just I'm sort of came in there. Yeah, it did just comes right in and I'm gonna make a wrinkle right about here. I'm gonna say, all right, let's let's give us let's give ourselves a a shinier part of the dress. By being painterly with her, and there was no way to really describe this piece. I could have done it, and I was gonna do it like pre ahead of time. But then I did. I'm gonna come right here and add some of these little highlights. And I'm gonna bring some of them down the skirt. Not too many. And then I'm gonna come back with some green. I just wanna layer this up, paint it up, just with the green. And you're gonna find as you do this that, the, that her space, that her dress, all of that starts to take on a little shape or a little flow, a little yellow and green. And I'm flaring this out here even more because we wanna give it a lot of gesture right off the canvas so she's like, she's elegantly running. She's elegantly running. Here we go. There we go. I'm getting some yellow on there. I just, can you see I'm dry brushing? My pressure is really light and I'm just letting these brush strokes imply the flow of the garment. If it gets too bright, if it gets too like optimistically green, I like how I like that optimistically green. It's 
too optimistically green. Much less on optimistic. my way to a murder green. You can always come back with the phthalo. No, it's super green. <laughs> it's super green. It's ruby, ruby rod. Like ruby super rad. Green. Let's see how she's doing. Let's look at. So you can see I'm just. Isn't that crazy how fast she goes? That's really weird. She's like hot mess, hot mess, hot mess. Wonderful. Though somebody just recently like called me a hot mess, like that was an insult. I'd like to clear up the internet and say that's actually a compliment. It's saying like you can have none of your stuff together and like wake up with your hair going every which direction and still look fabulous. It's like just saying Angelina Jolie wakes up a hot mess. It's not really, it's not really that much of a insult. Oh. Just saying <laughs> to the internet, that stuff's really look upable too. Before you throw one off the bow, you can look it up. John's just like, you're so weird. I, I married you. I like how weird you are. I'm so glad you did. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I have to say there's a really interesting conversation going on. In, in what that. is going on in They're chat. talking about first cars. That is not related to painting. I know. I Boot just, I no, have just to kidding. say. Nobody's just booted. No, no, no. It's awesome. There, but there's a really Nobody's interesting booted. thread going Nobody's on. Booted. It's really long. That, that's just like, they're going. They have, they have some real interesting feels. There's some love. I think okay. it is. There's person. love of the cars. I think there's some love for first cars that have come up I in here. I feel so. like I've lightened a lot of this up really well. So I'm going to now darken. I'm going to get some of my black, some of my blue, and some of my green because her sleeve is like this crazy deep medieval green. And now I'm going to be a little bit more particular. So at the shoulder, I'm going to round the shoulder out, slim in towards the elbow. The arm's going to like taper into the elbow, doesn't it? If you think about an arm, it slenders back down into the elbow. So you, you can know that and just sort of paint that in. When you're loosely figure painting people, like sketching people, these are important things to pay attention to because they'll let you in minutes do these little paint sketches of whole crowds. And you're just wanting to make sure that you've got a nice little form there, a little space. We've got a lot of hair coming down. Yes. So don't feel like you're trapped because you're not. And we've got a highlight that we've got to put in. So really, look, I'm not even being that crazy about this. If you think of the Hocus Pocus sisters, sort of think that direction. I'm going to darken this up even a little bit, but I want it to be the bright green right here. You can darken this other sleeve up with this deep green color. And I might peek a little of her hand out there later, but for right now, I am good. And yeah, I have a good skin tone here for all this. Now that I have this, right, I'm going to come with a brighter than I need green. Brighter than I need green. I'm going to make sure that I, I have a little cuff that I'm starting to discuss here at the edge of the sleeve nice wide cuff and I'm going to pull that down. It's just you're like wait that's just a weird stripe. That's right. I want you to pull down this weird yellow stripe. It's going to be wide at the wrist and taper down. There we go. Wide at the wrist and taper down. Okay and we're going to take our, our, our darker green. We're going to take a green and a little bit of blue. Come behind here. Why don't we darken that and darken a little bit here. We're just trying to show that this has popped out. You can even drop a little shadow right under here. So now we popped out a little sleeve and this gives me room to give her like her weird little knife deal that she's got going. While you're at this light pop out, take your yellow and your phthalo green. Come to the outer edge of the sleeve and I'm going to outline just a titch with this bright yellow and I'm going to bring back a couple wrinkles in the fabric. So that there's a little smidge, a smidge of light. See how we've done? It looks like the fabric has caught some little bit of light. Let's back up because we're trying to do very little. Less is more. How are we doing? Looking good. It's looking kind of nice, isn't it? We're doing pretty good. Now I'm going to give her some red hair. So I'm going to start with uh, the burnt sienna and a little burnt umber to do the the firmness on her, on like kind of flesh in her hair, which is really going to be just about pulling the hairline down. 
And I don't have to worry about any of the gold or any of the filigree till later. So this is really just about creating her flowing long hair. And so that's going to be thinking about my brush strokes, right? How do I pull these down long and flowing? And then creating those highlights, right? I'm on my number four cat's tongue still, and I'm just going to make sure that I have lots of tapered little, see that? Doesn't take a lot. Maybe some of it tapers right there and does some fussy things. It's going to be great when we get the highlights in. So now you're like, oh, look, I got a big brown blobby and mabba shape, maybe shape at the top. But as she starts to come in, as you hit this highlight, you hit this other highlight, it's like what you're doing develops into the painting. So here we are. I don't even think we're that much time in, are we? No, we're, uh, we're about an hour and 11 minutes and 11 seconds. That I was pretty cool. I think we're going to be huh. done in probably an hour 30. I'll be surprised if we're not. Yeah. Maybe sooner. And we'll just keep showing these little tendrils of hair down. You know, so let that dry just a little, 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 little bit. Now, if you don't do hands, this next part can be super, super stressful. I will try to talk you through it. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre over here so I can work it a bit. I'm going to add some uh, quinacridone to my yellow ochre, and I make this sort of peach color. And then it's really about just grabbing the... The white, and I'm just going to make a very light skin tone. And I'm going to add a little burnt over, and then I've got a dark skin tone. So we've got a couple skin tones here. For Caucasian European mixes, I do have videos on other skin tones. This is just a Caucasian kind of European mix. All right. I might need my glasses so I can see huh. well enough to do this. I need to, in very short order, say a lot with a little. So the thing that we're going to see a lot of is her thumb, which is going to come out. I always like to think of the paddle, because the hand is a paddle. And the thumb has a little bit of a nice mark. Oh, look, I'm getting green there. That means my painting underneath wasn't dry. i got to dry it. Okay. Okay. Oh. There she goes. Okay. And... So while she's drying that, uh, and the reason she's drying that is to make sure that the lower layers don't pick up on the next layers. And she's using it on low heat just to make sure that you get air over there just to sort of, uh, you know, help the curing process speed up. And if you guys have a chance, come join us in the live chat. We're having a fantastic time talking about all sorts of shenanigans, sometimes on topic, sometimes off topic. But you can always, uh, if you have a chance, join us in the live. We love having you guys with us. Um, Please share up your paintings. Oh, we love, love, love seeing all the paintings. You so uh, please don't forget to share those up for us. And uh, all the things. She's back. I'm back from outer space. I just want to put in like a hint of flesh tone. A hint. A hint. I don't want to, you know, we don't want to do the whole hand. That's a whole nother day, right? Right. So I know I've got my little thumb joint here. And I'm going to just make a nice little mark right there for the thumb to hold it to the side. And then I'm going to make my little finger marks. So if the knuckle's right here, and one right here, and one right here. Just a little bit of these little fingers. One good shadow, and a not look at that, it's so crazy. It's like, this is the sign for hand. <laughs> now, just to say that there's something down here, I am going to like add a little bit of flesh tone right here. But not because I intend to do a whole hand. I just want to imply that it exists in that space. And I'm going to let this all dry for a second while it's drying. I'm going to cuff this up. And that's the highlight color that we made from earlier. All right, so let's, let's make sure that she's got a little bit of a cuff, right? That is also here. So now it looks like our hand's holding some dress. And she's got some cuff. Letting everything dry for a second. I'll put the knife in in a minute. The knife is, of course, optional. But I do like the gold on her dress. Now, I have a YouTube friend, Zoe. A Zoe YouTube Hung, friend. And she's a how-to-do fashion 
channel. She does fashion art. She actually like, I would... like she teaches it. Like she's famous for teaching fashion art at universities and to students. I would say it's more fair to say she's a, 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 a fashion sorceress. Fashion sorceress. Although it's not accurate. magic, it's practice, as she says. <laughs> I love that she says she's, she's so just mean. She's got such cool saying that I, I, she I does. like her. She does. And she is Miss Authentic, Miss Awesome. She will tell you how yeah. it is. And, you know, she will break it down to you. But she can tell you, and we're going to do this stuff, but she can tell you right now today, if you need to know it, how to do plaid on a fold. <laughs> yeah. So if you're like, no, I have to have this exact pattern. Plaid I'm just on doing fold. these. What I'm doing is I'm doing these little swirls to talk about it because see, I painted everything loosely. This loose painting that I've done is allowing me to do this. Yeah, I'm like like a calligraphy. If you've ever done calligraphy, just these little kind of wonderful brush marks is showing some of the gold in this dress. Let's see how that's going. How are we doing? Oh, doesn't it look pretty? It's so crazy how pretty it looks so fast. So, you know, wherever you're at in this, in this space, in this journey, right, there's a way to express it. And everything is not better than everything else. Like, it's so wonderful to be hyper-realistic. I just saw an artist on uh, Facebook who had uh, been booted off of Facebook for being too good. Now, what, the, what brush too are you good. using there? I'm still on my number four cat's tongue. Cat's tongue. That's a good brush. It's a very good brush. But you know, it's an important thing when you're done with these to take them to the brush spa and reshape them after using them. Because if you get a bunch of paint in the ferrule, it can mess them up and take away their point. And so I've got to do a whole video about the spa. But I do have a how to clean brushes video that I did with the brush guys at the space. If you don't mind me having a cold and being in Hawaii. Not that we were actually in Hawaii, but we got the green screen room. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened there. <laughs> no. We're like, we can film anywhere. Jeff's, and Jeff is awesome. Jeff is really awesome. And Those Jeff and Dave really came awesome. out and joined us. Hopefully, you know, we need to get to have them come down here to our studio here in Houston and do that, that again. We'll see. We'll that. invite them out here. Yeah. Jeff and Dave, if you hear us, come on down to Houston. Anyways, my point was done. There's an artist kicked off of Facebook for being too good. Oh. Too good. Too good. Too good. Now, I've heard this my whole life. I've heard very angry artists who didn't get in that gallery because I'm too good. That's what happened. I'm too amazing. And all their friends are like, yeah, that's what it is. You're too amazing. Not that they took an abstract, amazing abstract possibly, to a hyper-realistic Southwest gallery. Not that that's what happened. <laughs> and the owner doesn't hang any abstract work. But that they were just too fabulous. I'm going to add a little gold highlight to the front. And I think... Objectively, I want to add some to the sleeve. That's okay with everybody because I just like that hint of gold over the green so much. How are we loving that? Yeah. All right. So now we've got some highlights on the on the hands. I need to pink up the hands a bit because, you know, over the green, the pink can gray out and make her hands seem a little undead. It's a thing that happens. Just saying. I'm going to get some more of my color, my skin color. Then I'm going to go more to the pink so it's rosy. And just make sure that it feels like her fingers are at least a little pink somewhere using the edge of my brush. I could switch to a detail brush, and if your brush isn't working for you, always switch to a brush you have a better handle on. I'm not that worried about it, so. Now I've got her hair while I'm letting all this sort of dry and resolve, right? You can decide to crown or not to crown. That is the question. I'm going to take a little of my cad red light into my burnt sienna. And if you want the braid, bring the top of the crown around in this stroke. I'm bringing it around in this stroke. I'm going to pull this down. And I don't mean the crown that's on her head. I mean the crown of her head. I'm going to take this around too. Be, you're going to want to start to imply that the hair is being gathered. All right, we're going to just gather some of the hair, allow some shadows to exist there. And then you can add the braid pattern, which is the back and forth down the hair. And then I'm going to just very softly kind of curl her hair, add these little highlights. She doesn't have one-tone hair. She's a... 
She's gone to a really good YouTube hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to just make sure. Give her good ombre if you're going to give her the home ombre. Yes. Give her a very good ombre. I'm just creating these brush patterns, right? These little strokes of potential. Don't get this too close to your braid or you'll lose your highlight. And I'm just coming here. This is going to be done in what is my detail brush in a minute. But you've got to get this base on or it just doesn't come together. Now, interestingly enough, I'm going to switch to something small and dark. I'm going to get into my small detail brush and my black paint. And I'm going to do my crown, but I'm going to do a little black into my blue together, like a peanut butter cup. And above my braid, I'm going to take this moment to go ahead and give her a crown, which is the band across her head above the braid. And here's your trick. So the issue with the crown is really more perspective than anything else. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I have these focal bits right here that are spires that I can see that are going to make my little pattern. And then I have bits that are foreshortened and there should be something peeking out from the front of her head. As long as I can pull those things together, I should be able to tell a fairly decent crown story. And that's really all I am is telling little stories about this moment in this young lady's life where she is making some life choices about how she's going to live her life. And I bet there has been more than one girl who's worked on these little life choices <laughs> during that time frame. All right. Now, this is the Fleur de Lis. So I'm going to, so we know she's French. I'm going to bring that around. I'm going to do my little Fleur de Lis in the top of the crown. And actually, it's probably just that the photographer got this crown and wasn't thinking, oh, like, this is a French crown. But these are little touches that can make it feel very crown-like. And I'm just putting it in black because I'm going to come back with just a few highlights and a couple little gemstones, right? But the shadows I've got to get in. I'm just making the fleur de lis shape and then a little swoop. This is a very comfy crown. Let's say it's padded. She's an action princess. Action princesses are everywhere. I'm so proud of all my fellow sisters around the world being action princesses. It's okay to like pink and also be strong. These things are both all right. All those expressions of being a woman are perfectly acceptable. Or man, it's all good. Yeah. Humanity. It's good just to be yourself. You can see I've added the little foreshortened thing. And then I'll talk about this just a little bit, but I don't have to say too much because it is foreshortened. So now I have the basis for a crown in here. Right? I'm going to do some details on her hair, her hand. Drop a shadow. I mean, oh, it's, it's going to go. Details on hair, knife, a little more stuff, details on crown, a little splatter heart, and then a drop shadow, and we're done. What do y'all think of that? I think it's pretty cool. I'm excited. I like how it's coming together. I do too. It was like, I had this idea and I was like, there's just no way to... Action princess. Action princesses. She says no. Princess says no. Princess says no. Princess says no. Okay, I'm going to give a little handle at the top of her hand. Now, the trick about your knife is going to be a straight line. If you can't make a straight line, like me, I'm going to get my black paint loaded. And I'm going to get my ruler. I'm going to simply give myself a straight line to work from. And I'm going to make this a pretty long blade, apparently. I don't even know why she thought she could hide this thing. It's going to be wider at the top and narrow at the bottom. They're pointy and sharp. That's their whole thing. So I need that basis of shape. Now, it's also got a nice little cross handle, which kind of comes across here. And you can put there your hilt there. That's right. So you don't cut up your hand and get a lot of blood on it. It gets all slippery. Well, it, it stops. Murder is challenging. It, it stops the, you know, it stops other, it, it's, it's a, it's a, 
it's a useful tool if you ever had to use one to have a hilt. That's right. But I if, hope you don't, but oh, if yeah, you did. I, but it's just, you know, for prettiness, we're just going to draw it in there. Just say that. Okay, so we've got a little hilt. We've got a little thing. Uh-oh. See there? I got a little wobbly on my... That's okay. You know, sometimes those, those you know, no. they're, they're handmade. <laughs> it's true that things that are handmade can have a moment, but I'm going to use, before my paint dries, I'm going to use my brush, and I'm going to kind of erase my boo-boo. If I couldn't erase my boo-boo, I would come back with a little green and paint out my boo-boo. But I do want a nice, sharp blade. I might even add some drippy blood, so it depends yeah. on how cheeky I feel. Now, while I still have this little fellow here, and I, I don't have a mister, so I'm just going to get my cleanest water that I have right here. And I'm going to make some hair hair highlight colors, which are going to be my uh, cad red and a little of my burnt sienna. And come and get a little of your yellow. See there? Yeah. This is going to be our strawberry blonde highlights in here. Ah, I like those strawberry blonde highlights. Got to have them. Got to have them. All right. Let's talk about this little braid. Do, 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 do. So coming right here, I've got a little bit of hair that braids. And this little friend tucks into it. And a little braids. And tucks into it. And we've done a bunch of stuff on braids, but we're just saying, okay, there's a braid. You know what that is, right, man? Yeah. I'm thinning my paint. What I'm doing is I'm getting drops of water and I'm thinning my paint. Now I could just switch to a fluid paint. That would be also okay. Just I made this a little more red. And I'm going to just add some of these highlights in her red hair throughout. Right? Like her hair is here and it's, maybe it's gathering, right? Let's talk about the braid, which is just about making these strokes that imply the texture that the braid has. You could, of course, also, if you felt like you needed to, talk about that up here a little bit. Just got a little part. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Are we doing all right, guys? Great. This is great. I really like how you're showing the hair highlights here. Well, this is where my hair is going to come in. I've done a very loose job on the hair, and I don't want to over-tighten up, because if I over-tighten up right now, it will throw the whole piece off. So what I've got to do is I've got to find my little balance of, I am telling you some more about the hair. So I'm going to come here and make a highlight, and I'm going to come right over here to the right and make a highlight. And it's in this highlighting little flowing pattern that I start to tell you all about her hair without having to say, tell you about every individual strand of hair. But I want to tell you about a couple so you understand about her head of hair a little more. Everything in painting and art is expressed through these lines and tones and all of these little objectives. So how you tell that story starts to become super important, right? The way my line thickens and thins tells you about how her hair falls down. And see, we're just coming here, and the way that these little lines go, suddenly her hair will start to fall and flow and wave, and now you know that she's got wavy hair. Wavy hair is fantastic. I think it's going to be very interesting here at the end. Every time I come to get some paint, I get a drop of water, I swirl it around, I smooth out that paint. I take it out of the heavy body space and I get it into a softer body by thinning it with water. You can thin acrylic paints with water. Yes, you can. And every time I go over there, I'm grabbing just a slightly different value of the red and yellow and all the stuff. There we go, looking pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Let's get really into the yellow and even give some white in there. 
just a little bit. Not for everything, but for a couple places, let's place this even more defined, thought out highlight. Places maybe on our, on our braid where the sun might be hitting it. And then just around. All right, we're gonna look at her for a second and then we're gonna pop in her crown, put in a splatter, drop a shadow, be done. How are we doing? Good. Good, good. It's a surprising thing, isn't it? Are you surprised? I hope you're surprised at home. Every once in a while I like to do something different and Valentine's Day seemed like a really good place to play for a minute and have a lot of fun together. All right, you ready, babe? I'm ready. You ready? Okay, so ready, what's ready? what do we do? Uh, no. I'm gonna get my gold and I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'm going to add a little highlight to the hilt with my gold paint. You could also just use the yellow ochre. And I'm going to add it to the hilt. Not much, though. Just a little. I'm going to come here on the crown in a couple places. Just highlight the metal. I'm also going to drop a gem in there. We just want to talk about this being a metal crown. And that's a good way of doing it. The other good way of doing it, believe it or not, is getting into the um, burnt umber and adding some, not too much, because you need the value of the crown to be dark so it shows against your hair. You see how we've just given it some metal? Yeah. Just a little bit. She obviously has to have green gemstones, which are going to be just the green. I've just loaded up a little bit of green paint. We're going to put those right here. Right, with just the green, which barely, barely shows. We'll show in a minute, but that's where we start. Now I'm gonna get a lot of my yellow and my green, and I'm gonna make that light green. I'm gonna come right here at the top of this and add a little highlight to the gemstone. Just a little bit, just to say that happened. And we las her. Her knife is, I think I'm going to do the black and the blue together, right, making sort of a highlight. I'm going to get my fluid white, and I'm going to make sure that I just create a highlight on the blade and a center, uh, what do you call the babe? It's like, it's like for the blood to go. Oh, the channel in the middle? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's, there's, there's sometimes a, there's a, there's a, you know, sometimes a, a channel where there's a poison that you can set into the blades and things like that. I'm going to add that there. going to come and add just one more little bit of highlight right here, even right here over the gold. Now, while that has lightened up quite a bit, now I need to drop a shadow under it. The shadow I'm going to do, i got to rinse out my little mini brush to this, has got to come out from my blade a bit, but still be there because it's the little drop shadow. As if the blade is from behind her. See what I'm doing? And there's a little bit of space so it creates that, that sense of her hand being up. Now I can pull it into here a little bit around her hand, but the rest of it needs to come back a bit so the blade feels like it's out. And we'll drip the edge of it if we need to. I think it's also fun. I'm going to cheat a little bit and get a little metallic and put some of it right there. Just a couple bits of it. Now, my red, my red, 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 I'm going to get back into my little cat's tongue. I've got this splattery heart that I've got to do before I drop my shadow. How are you guys doing? You loving her? I've like not been checking in as much as I usually do, John. <laughs> I'm going to take my Cad Red and my Lizarin Crimson, and I like the two of them together for a really fun blood color, mm. as you may have noticed from previous paintings. Because the Lizarin is like in that range, like almost coagulating. So the first thing is find the space that you want to talk about the heart. And I'll put it right here. They were just asking about that. They were like, what about the heart? Oh, got to do the heart. Otherwise, it's not, bad. Like, it's not, it's not <laughs> what you're wanting. I was just, you know, I just want to make sure. I was going to give you a little room there, but they were, they were starting to panic. So I was like, oh, okay. okay. Just, you know. I don't have to paint this heart in perfectly. I need to get the base of it in, yeah. right? 
I'm gonna need to mask a, like something. I need to mask the um, hen. And they think that it, they, they like the idea of no blood on the on the knife, just on the on the heart. Just on the heart. Okay. Just, just on the you heart. You guys a, are in charge. Yeah. There's no, no, no you know, you know, and like I was saying in chat, you know, love is a, love is a tough topic because not everybody has a positive experience all the time around love, and so <laughs> it's okay to. Was ha there a person who did? Let's go get them. Yeah, and you know. So it's okay for us to talk about that and have a space for that. We just yeah. try to re be respectful that you know. There are little brushes in our community with us, so we you know it's okay to talk about these things and to, and to chat about them. We in just, a medieval sense, yeah. Hey, just, babe, where did my splatter brush go? It oh, was here, and now sure. it's not here. I am not. I, I saw. I put one right on the top. It was on the top of your. Is it? I see a little. I see the the small splatter brush up there. The the one that looks like a toothbrush. Yeah, it's on where? top of the 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 case. Look on top. Look right on top of the silver brush display. Up where your pouncers are on the top. Oh, just oh, you move things on me, and then I can't find them. <laughs> so I'm gonna get a little bit of this, okay? That was fun. I bet you. I wonder how many people were finding it for you. <laughs> and I'm gonna take some of this. Now this works really well with my splatter brush because my splatter brush gives me a lot of control, and so I can control where my splatter goes. If you're using like a, I know it looks like a toothbrush. It's not. It's a tool I've always dreamed of having. But now we're getting, isn't that fun? Yeah. I'm going to put a little more water into it so it's a little more splashy. A little more splashy splash? Yeah, a little more splashy splash. And I'm going to back up a little bit and come here. There we go. Some tonality. Does it feel good? Yeah. Now the trick is going to be the little drippy drips. Oh, this is going to need a big wash. I have not been good to this brush. It's still fine, though. <laughs> Just saying. Let's put some drips down off of our heart. Right, we need some little drips. So a drip kind of runs. And we've done drips where we've just let it drip. But this is the kind of piece where I want to know where my drips are going. I'm going to get into my uh, quinacre down here. Don't you? Don't you want to know where your drips are going? Yeah. So in this case, I'm going to sit there and say, oh, we, we're going to decide where our drips are by painting them in. This in combination with the splatter will make a believable drip effect. And I'm going to make sure that there's some of this heart that's solid enough where you can see the heart while still seeing the drips. There we go. We're good. Yeah. See our drips. Ooh, I like it. Now, what's left? And, and we said no, no, uh, no blood on the knife. So I'm going to dry this and drop a shadow on that pen so it pops. Okay. I'm just going to quickly dry that off real quick. And thank you guys for all joining us here today. Don't forget, in the link in the description below, you can find a link to the uh, materials that we used here, the traceable, the reference image, all of that stuff that you might need to complete this painting. It's all there. Please, please, please do, do share your final work for us up on Facebook, on our website, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all of the places that you can go. We really appreciate it. We love seeing your painting. So share those up as you can. Um, gosh, other than that, it's been really cool seeing you guys. We've got a huge crowd here today painting and chatting along with us. I, I have to say chat has been particularly fun. If you guys have not joined us in chat, I would, I would recommend definitely trying to do that. It's a lot of fun. We don't, as we said earlier, always stay on topic, but the topic is always fun and always something to do with this. So please join us as you get a chance. <laughs> you guys are ready to drop a shadow on this thing and make it go pop, pop, pop? Drop the shadow. We're going to do a couple things to help her pop, pop, pop. Pop, 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 pop. And so the first is going to be some just jet black because this is a drop shadow and it's just so powerful and so strong. And I'm going to come along Ooh. the edge of this space very carefully up to the edge here. Ooh. Some of this dark light will go into my feather on the pen. Yeah. Now that's going to instantly make it more graphic. It does. Before I've even built it out already, I'm going to have to put my glasses on. What is going on with me today? 
You're doing detail work? I'm doing detail work. It's such a, such a time of life. I need glasses. It doesn't really matter as long as I can see. That will be the whole like thing I gotta have here. Now I'm gonna pull the shadow a bit away from the tip right now. See how I made a separation between the tip and there? Yeah. This is the trick for this. There is this whole series of paintings I really like where the guy would like do stuff like this and then he would put hyper realistic raspberries on top of it like someone had left raspberries on art and the way he did the shadow and everything huh. it was so cool you usually like that huh i did because you were like wait you know because the painting would be super painterly and gorgeous and then you know he would have this like raspberry <laughs> that was there like it, somebody had been so like disrespected the work by putting a raspberry on it. Now, was it always a raspberry or was it like uh, his other paintings? He used liked to... raspberries, but sometimes he would do pens or um, other objects, keys, like car keys, though, not like ancient keys. Right. It's just like somebody just set it on a painting or something. Yeah. Like somebody came home, like, you know, you had bought this painting and then, you know. Somebody left something sitting on it. That's yeah. funny. I think that's kind of, that's, that's, you know, I, I appreciate that kind of art. I'm much more of a performance art kind of person. Yeah, I loved it. And it was like in the most ex unexpected place. Oh, look at that. Can we see the pop now? Yeah, I can see the pop. He goes pop, pop, pop. How's it doing? Let's see. I like it. And if you need to, right, and you're trying to like help her really pop out from the background, you can. I'm going to take a little of this and a little of my black, right? I'm doing them together. We've got a second, right, guys? Oh, Julie loves how close to the picture this is. It's <laughs> just an unexpected direction. I'm going to go right here where the dress is coming off and very carefully make sure that there's some kind of rouging, some, some darkness so you can see everything back here. So this yeah. is a darker value. And then up front, guess what I'm going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and white. Stay very, very light. Very, very light. Not white, but light, light, light. And I'm going to do a similar thing. This isn't a drop shadow, but I'm going to come here because I want her to pop from this base. So at first, it'll just be a white highlight. At first. So I'm coming along and I'm lining with white. You don't have to do this part. This is just something that you can do. One of the things that happens in paintings is if your values don't have enough variance, you sometimes can't see the objects. They're all the same uh, range on the grayscale, right? So I've got that nice white light. Let's take a look at that real quick. See how now she's got that highlight. It makes her seam outlined. I'm going to wipe off my brush a lot. I'm going to get some of my soft gel that's just still sitting here on my canvas. And I'm going to blend this in. Paint hasn't dried yet. So I can create this little halo into my canvas. Look at that. Yeah. Causing her to feel like she's standing out maybe a little bit more somehow outlined or... You know what I mean? Yeah. We could have done this two ways. We're doing kind of a blended glaze. We could have also done what's called a blushing, which I'm going to be showing you guys when we get more into flowers. I'll show you guys how to rouge a canvas. And this is just going to be about catching that color and making sure that... Oh, let me get up her on her. Yeah, we're just, we're giving her like a little highlight to say that there's, there's this light around her. Ah, there you go, yeah. See, that gives her some space, doesn't it? Let's look back. Oh, see her now? And yeah. if you want to pop the objects off the back here, you can take the black and the brown together and come at the back of the hair is what I think I'd start it and just do a very fine kind of like shadowing of everything that's happening back here. Might even go up into the hair with it a little bit. You can always put the hair back. And around my little fussy bits here. It's a subtle little bit. I'm not putting a thick line, guys. This won't work if you put a thick line. 
but it's a way if you're losing objects add a little dark line right here and a little dark under her arm so we can see that a little better just adding some shadows and some objects and some value to make her feel like she's standing out let's look all right pop is she popping now i think that looks pretty good i'm gonna put a little highlight in their back I kind of like that little triangle that was in her arm. So I just go ahead and make sure I'm still showing that because I like that. I'm just playing with my values and making sure the objects we're in. And, and the reason I'm blushing this out is so that it's not um, a super strong line. That It's there and it is a line, but it's more like a glow. I'm just for blending this out and it doesn't take over my whole my whole identity on the piece so we have hard edges soft edges things that have value and an anti valentine's even though you know we are we're, wherever we are with love i hope this was a fun thing to do on this holiday oh yeah Julie at least we didn't have totally a line fun. And I look forward to painting with you guys who are in the Big Art Quest tomorrow on Half Off Chocolate Day. Half Off Chocolate Day! Happy Half Off Chocolate Day! You guys have a fantastic day. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you with these all really soon for something else crazy we might do. Bye-bye! Know if I have my mic. Am I off? Or am I on? You're on. There you go. Oh, there you go. They're gonna be like, what? Hi. Forgot to sign it. They were like, you forgot to sign. I did. So we're just so for for those of you guys who stuck behind, we're gonna do a secret signing. We just we we thought we were recorder signing. I'm gonna do it with gold though. It may not be a good decision, but I'm doing it. Thank you for catching that, guys. It is important that I sign it. I have to go white. The gold is not showing. It's too transparent. But I haven't washed off the gold, so that's interesting. It's important to sign. Thank you for catching it. <laughs> All right. Weird little things. And actually, like, I'm so glad you're still here because I'm going to get a little bit of my cat red. All right. I'm going to just do this a little bit on my heart because I just felt like uh, it could be brighter. This is the post show that's not post show. Yeah, it's supposed nothing happened. Don't tell everybody else. They don't know. You have you have you have officially ten minutes to be under two hours. Okay. All right. There we go. I just wanted to pop that. It just wasn't poppy enough. Okay. That's it. Hope you guys are great. <laughs> See you with these. Yeah. I'll really soon. Bye. <laughs>